what life experiences have you had that will make you a good MP for Bay of Plenty? Sure. Um, so it's a, I have a very eclectic background. It's from working in communities and frontline, being a teacher, and then also working up in central government. So I've worked in about 12 different government organisations in a range of roles, and the highest level was at a policy level and a director's level reporting to a minister. So I kind of have seen the system, how parliament works, how policy writing and making and decision making work at the government level, and also being at the front line impacted by government decisions. So I, I understand the system, and the system is broken. Why have you been chosen as a local <coughs> candidate for Bay of Plenty? I'm really passionate about the Bay of Plenty. I grew up here. I went to school in Wahi, Whangamata, Katikati. When I left school at the age of 15, I worked in the market gardens and the dairy and retail sector and then worked my way up and then went off to study. And now I work in charity sector. I do mentoring for small businesses as a volunteer and, and use my expertise in organisation business to help you know grow businesses around here and charities. What are some of the biggest issues facing the local electorate? Yeah, sure, there's about there's four that I can think of at the top of my head, and some of them are systemic, you know, countrywide, and some of them are quite specific to the Bay of Plenty. One is about making sure we get um, people's voices back into democracy. Certainly, real challenges around the roading infrastructure. There are things where um, the previous government have made decisions to take away double lanes. They've got we've got speed restrictions in areas that are, just don't make sense. The um, infrastructure, the roadworks that have occurred in our um, central district um, centre has really slowed up businesses and caused so much mayhem for our businesses. And a lot of business, you know, I see a lot of shops that are empty now because they just couldn't sustain all the road infrastructure issues for, I think it's been at least five years. Housing affordability is just through the roof. And that's not just um, an issue for the Bay, but certainly for the Bay because we've had a lot of people come in and move and retire or just bring their businesses here because Auckland and other areas are too expensive. And yet, um, you know, the government needs to be helping people with their help with housing affordability. There are too many empty ghost houses in New Zealand. Ghost houses are, are houses that are owned by overseas investment companies. They are not rented, they are empty and they're sitting there with a capital gain. And so we actually don't have a sh housing shortage. We have hundreds of thousands of empty ghost houses in the country that are not being tenanted. So there needs to be some, the government needs to do something about housing. One other thing is, you know, the Bay of Plenty is such a beautiful climate, and we are so lucky in that we could easily become another food bowl for the country, not just kiwi fruit, but other growing areas, especially having left lost a lot of the tapuki land. And um, we, I see that the government should be in, in helping to grow our primary sector, our horticulture and our primary sector industries. Youth crime has been in the news a lot lately. Yeah. Um, what's, what's the solution to it? Yeah. So I think, unfortunately, in the last five years, the, the, the way in which government created the, the environment, a lot of communities and youth especially became disconnected. They have, they, you know, you only need to talk to the youth and they have lost hope in their future. Many of them uh, have just believed that there's just nothing there for us in New Zealand. And so um, we have to bring back opportunities for learning, for being engaged and involved with the communities to, um, you know, raise the awareness and bring um, the kids back into apprenticeships. There's not enough of those that, you know, businesses are crying out for them and they have to be, so super well subsidised so that struggling businesses can support these young ones to grow. The issue with youth and crime is that our education system have let them down. I used to be a teacher, a primary teacher, and I've seen over the last 25 years that quality of education curriculum has been so severely eroded. So we've got a lot of youth leaving school who can't read, write or, or do maths, just basic maths. So, you know, they are leaving feeling disenfranchised. They are fit when they leave school, the youth have got are lost. And we have to create ways to bring them back um, 
into feeling like they belong to the community and that they are loved and that there's a positive future for them. How can we stop people from committing crime in the regions? So, and this goes a little bit to my previous answer around um, people in the last three years especially have become disconnected from their communities, isolated, um, and there has become a lack of respect and accountability. Then we don't have enough restorative and educational services um, funded by government to help people lift them out of crime and into learning something new, a different way of living. We have so much intergenerational crime and poverty in New Zealand, and successive governments haven't addressed that. What are some of the tangible things that the government can do to help reduce that and reduce the stress that people are facing because of the rising yeah. cost of living? Yeah, there's two levels to this. Japan owns our largest mainland eggs producing company. China owns a lot of our milk processing companies. So a lot of international and other governments from overseas own our primary sectors, food producing sectors. We've got the kiwi fruit industry, the um, beef processing industry are all owned by uh, other overseas companies that are Chinese owned or other owned by other countries. We are um, having to pay imported prices or prices that are set by international conglomerates that are now own our food that is produced here in New Zealand. What the government can do is start start supporting the primary sector industries in New Zealand to be New Zealand owned and grown, and um, so that we become more self sustainable in our food producing side of it. So that makes food affordability in New Zealand realistic. Another central government issue is that they've allowed two dominant supermarket chains to pretty much own most of our supermarkets and um, food outlets. Only very few are actually New Zealand-owned um, enterprises. So, um, again, we have to support them anything that's New Zealand-owned and New Zealand-producing food. What can you do to help people who are struggling to find a home to rent, especially here in the Bay of Plenty? Yeah, in the Bay, certainly, we'd be pushing for making sure that the um, the Bay, that the internal migration within New Zealand has to be from caused by the government, has to be created, has to be supported by the housing being free, freed up. At the second layer, I would be pushing for government to be taxing all those empty ghost houses, those international owners, so that they are required to either free them up or sell them to New Zealand owned um, first home owners and, and home owners. What can we do to engage more people at the local level of politics? Yeah, and this is such a really good question and a and really deep discussion around the groups you know that I attend um, around the communities is that people have lost trust and confidence in the integrity of the political system, of the 120 candidates we've got here. They feel that the party politics have taken over the people's needs and the people's voices. So unless there's a change, this time significantly where you have people who are from the ground up, who have no vested interest in, a, in, in paying overseas people to pay for our party politics, all that type of stuff, being more real about the decisions that have been made that are voices from the people, that's the only way we're going to get people you know, interested in being, wanting to vote again. And if you are elected, what's the first thing that you would do for the electorate? Yes, definitely um, want to push for getting better government investment into the Bay of Plenty. You know, from the last 20, 30 years, Northland, Auckland, Christchurch have had big, big funds of money invested in them for, you know, some various reasons, some good reasons, some, I think it's just more political stuff. Whereas in smaller cities like Tauranga and others have not, have been the poor cousins to that. So I'm really pushing for better government investment into the Bay of Plenty. The government um, has let us down. The successive governments have let us down. The whole five parties have let us down. We have to make the system better so it works for us, the people, for our families. My mukapuna, you know, all our families deserve a better life. We shouldn't be here undermining New Zealand's authenticity, self-sufficiency. We should be grown up.
the future for them for our generations to come, not undermining it. Mm -hmm.